Hello and welcome to the new Yankee Workshop Season 2 Episode 4 – The Kitchen Dresser After a look at an early 18th century kitchen cupboard at Old Sturbridge Village, a living history museum in Sturbridge, Massachusetts, Norm constructs his own version from pine featuring open shelves above a base cabinet whose door sports an antique style hinge. He shows a pattern to draw the curved outline of the side pieces, then uses a handheld saber saw to make the cut, saving the cutout portions to make shelves. Using a molding head cutter on his table saw, Norm demonstrates how to add a decorative bead to the shelves. Enjoy! Today I greet you from Old Sturbridge Village, and we're at the site of the Freeman Farm. Now in 1830, this would have been considered middling, middle size, middle class, and middle income. And over here is the Freeman Farmhouse, and there's a great piece I want you to see in the kitchen. Now this is what I wanted you to see. A dresser or a cupboard built in the early 18th century. And the joinery is simple. Here, just a butt joint. And up on the shelves, there is a slight dado, but that's about it. Some decoration, a slight bead along the front of the shelves, and up here at the top, there is a molding, probably cut with a hand plane. Now the shelves have a plate groove, which indicates it was always meant to display dishes. And down here, perhaps this wide shelf was used to serve food. Now the bottom has a simple wooden latch, a single board door, and some nice hand wrought hardware. And this area was probably used just for general storage. Now, the thing that I really like about this piece is its proportions. And it has this nice curved shape down the side. Now, I can see where this could be used in a dining room or in a kitchen or perhaps even by the back door. I think I'll take some measurements. Now, I'd like to talk about shop safety. Be sure to read, understand, and follow all the safety rules that come with your tools. Knowing how to use your tools safely will greatly reduce the possibility of personal injury. And remember this, the most important safety rule of all is to wear these safety glasses. Now I'll show you how I built today's project. Well, here's our version of that dresser or kitchen cupboard, and it's a great piece. It's beautifully proportioned. And I would have liked to have built ours out of chestnut, but chestnut just isn't available. All the chestnut trees died off several decades ago here in New England. But there's plenty of pine. So ours is built from pine, and maybe later we'll stain it or paint it in a nice colonial color. The sides are made of several glued-up boards, as well as the top. And then there's some shelves. And the whole cabinet is backed with some nice pine plywood. This is just quarter-inch plywood. It's a nice clear pine. Fairly expensive, but it looks real good. Now, the hardware is T-hinges, which are very similar to the ones on the original cabinet, and I got those at my hardware store. And to hold the door closed, there's just a little wooden knob like this, and that just turns on a screw, and so we can get into the bottom of the cabinet where we can have a nice storage area there. Now, the first thing that I do is cut some boards a little bit longer than I need, and the right number of boards, in this case three, to get a little wider width than I need. I'll trim it all down later. Then I put the boards together and look at the overall texture and grain. I want them to be as consistent as possible. And before I glue up, I look at the end grain. Here you can see the growth rings are curving in this direction, which means the bark was out here. And on the next piece, they're curving down. You want to alternate those growth rings so you get a more stable top. It'll tend not to curl as much as having them all in the same direction. Now, before you can actually glue the boards up, you want to check the joints. And here, there is a little space. They're not pulled tightly together. I could fit a playing card in there. I want the boards to fit together without any force. They should dry fit with no space so that when I glue them up, I don't have to force them together. So I want to joint the edges. And the best way to do it of all is on a joiner. But before I go to the joiner, I want to mark my board so that they stay in the right orientation. A slash across here and two on this one, so that they're always in that position. Now, the joiner 
is a long bed tool. This three foot bed allows you to take any crookedness out of the boards. And it's set up with three carbide cutters and a heavy wheel that turn at a relatively high rate of speed. And by removing about a 32nd of an inch with each pass, I'll end up with nice joinery. That's pretty good. Now to glue my boards up, I'm going to use some pipe clamps, and you can never have enough of these. We always have almost every one used at, at each project. And I set the boards on the pipe clamps in the order that they belong, and I'm going to glue the edges. Okay, that's enough glue. I just set them on the pipes. Now notice I'm not using any clamping blocks in here. If the edge gets a little damaged, it's not going to matter because I have to trim it up later. Now the idea is to hold the boards tightly down to the clamp so that they'll be nice and flat and even and apply just enough pressure to squeeze a little bit of glue out of those joints. And if you have to, take a mallet and drive it down to the pipe. It's also a good idea to alternate your clamps. Have one underneath, one on the top, and one underneath, and this helps to minimize any curling as you clamp it. Well, now I'm ready to start working on these side members. And the first thing I want to do is rip them to the correct width. But before I do that, I want to remove any excess glue with an ordinary paint scraper. Now, when I rip them to width, I'm going to do it in two operations. I want to take a little bit off each side to get a nice true edge. And I'll do that right here on the table saw. Now I'll adjust my rip fence to the correct width, which is going to be 17 and a half inches. And then I'll run those through. Well, everybody's been asking me about this jig. This is a panel cutter, which has a piece of hardwood which rides in the miter slot of the table saw. And it's a piece of plywood with a cleat screwed on the edge. And it's, this cleat is a perfect 90 degrees to the saw blade. So it makes cutting large pieces very easy. And it should only take you about 10 minutes to make one of your own. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is square up one end of my side pieces. Now the height of my piece wants to be 73 inches. Well, now I'm just tracing the outline of the side cutout from a pattern that I made while I was out at Old Sturbridge Village. Now, notice that I've clamped both the side pieces together, and I've also put some wood underneath them to raise it above the bench so that as I cut it, I won't actually cut into my bench top. And I'm just going to remove the pattern, and I'm actually just going to use a handheld saber saw with a nice sharp blade to make that cutout. Well, now I'm not going to throw these cutouts away. They're actually going to make a couple of the shelves.
Well, this little drum sander attachment that fits on my drill does a great job at sanding out these edges, removing any roughness from the saw cuts, especially on these curves. Now, there's one more thing I'm going to have to do. I want to cut a little bit off this edge where my mark is. So I'll take my square, mark it, and I'll cut this over on the table saw. Well, as I said, I'm not going to throw away these scraps. I'm going to make them into a couple of the shelves for the cupboard, and I'm going to rip them to width and cut them to length over on the table saw. I'm giving my shelves and my top a light sanding because they fit into dados and I want to sand them first so that they'll fit tightly. Well that's pretty good and now we're ready for some dadoing. What I've done is laid it all out first. I'm going to have a dado that goes all the way through for the base of the cabinet Another one here, which goes all the way through for the top work surface. Then there's three dados for the shelves, and they'll stop short of the front edge because the shelves don't go all the way through. And then there's going to be one rabbit joint up here. Now, to make all those cuts, I'm going to use my router, and it's set up with a half-inch straight bit. And since I know the distance from the edge of the cutter to the edge of my router base is 2 and 7 eighths, I simply set up a straight edge 2 and 7 eighths inches above each line. You could use a piece of wood and a couple clamps, but these one-piece clamps work really nicely to do this job. Now plow all the grooves three-eighths of an inch deep. Well, now I'm going to take each shelf set it up in the way I want it in its final assembly and label the top front so I'll always have it in the right orientation. Then I'm going to slide it up against the groove I've already made. Put a couple little pencil marks at the bottom to show the bottom edge of the shelf. And then measure over from those the 2 and 7 eighths, which is my router base measurement that I already know. Now I'll move my clamp and then simply take my router and finish the dado. Let's see how that fits. That's going to be good. The next thing to do is to make a rabbit joint on the side with a little dovetail detail, and that'll tie the two pieces together, the side and the front. And the first thing I want to do is remove most of the material in the area of the joint while my straight bit is still in the router. And note that I've added a gauge fence to the router. Well, now I've put a half-inch dovetailing bit in my router. And I'm going to make a little short pass at the bottom of this rabbit. Now I've switched my bits once again, this time a 3 8 inch rabbiting bit to give me this little recess in the back edge of the cabinet for the plywood to sit in. Now the cupboard out at Old Sturbridge Village had nice beads on the top and bottom of each shelf, and I want to have that same detail here. Now they probably used a hand molding plane to cut that bead, but I'm going to use a molding head cutter, which fits in my table saw. 
Now, there's three cutters in this heavy wheel, and this is a triple bead. And since I only want one bead on each edge, I've attached an auxiliary wood fence. I'm going to bury two of those cutters, and I'll be able to bead my shelves. <laughs> All the shelves have little notches at the front corners, and that's so that they fit into the dados and cover up the end of that blind dado joint. And it looks best done that way. Now, to make those little cuts, believe it or not, I'm going to use a hand tool. This little saw does a good job at making those little cuts. Now, on my countertop, the front edges are eased. And the first thing I want to do is knock the corners off, and I'll just use my little belt sander for that. And now I use a router to do the edges. Well, there's no better time than right now to sand all the cupboard parts. Now, this base trim on my cupboard starts out as a piece of one by two. And I've set up my router table with a quarter inch OG bit. And since I'm removing a lot of wood, I'm going to do it in two passes. Well, now I'm ready for some assembly. A little bit of glue in the dados. Now I'll just set the shelf in. Now I'll temporarily clamp it together. And now I'm ready to nail it together. You could use simple finish nails and a hammer, but here in the shop I like to use my pneumatic tools. Here at the bottom, I'm going to use screws because the base molding will cover them up later. Now my quarter inch plywood back, and I'm going to attach that with my brad nailer. Now this little cleat will hold the styles, and later it'll act as a stop for the door. Now where the style meets the side of the cupboard, rather than conceal that joint, let's round over the edges and actually celebrate it. Now a little cleat for the door to close against. Now a little rail to dress the bottom of our cupboard. Well, 
I've used my power miter box to put the 45 degree angles on the corner of my base molding. And now I'm just going to apply a little glue and nail them in place. Now the top rail up at the front needs a little cut in the corner to fit into this dovetail. And once again, I'm going to use my little dovetailing saw. That little dovetail is actually going to help to hold the case together. Now my top molding here is made from three individual pieces. And I'll start with this bottom piece, which is simply window stop that I picked up at the home center. And it's two and a quarter inches down from the top of the cabinet. Now the intermediate piece is made on the table saw with the blade tilted to 30 degrees. Okay, that takes care of the intermediate piece. Now the top piece is just some square edge stock. Well, that completes the top molding. Now for the door. Well, the door couldn't be simpler. It's just four pieces of pine glued together, and I'm using these nice steel T-hinges, which actually look pretty authentic. Now, I've set the door in the cupboard, and I'm using a couple small nails at the bottom as a spacer. And now I'm just going to pre-punch for my screws using this little tool which has a plunger that makes the starter hole. I sanded this little block of wood to this shape and I'm fastening it with a little brass screw. And it's actually going to be a latch to help hold the door closed. Now I think it needs a little more sanding. But overall, I think this is a real good version of that piece we saw at Old Sturbridge Village. Well, now what do you think for finishing this piece? You may recall that the piece at Sturbridge Village was relatively dark. And this one may darken with time. But I'm going to start out using a stain that they call Spanish oak. It's sort of a medium brown. And I'm hoping that it'll help minimize the contrast between this red pine and the white pine. I'm delighted with the way the stain job turned out on this pine. And now I'm going to protect the whole piece with two coats of satin finished polyurethane. Well, I'm really pleased the way this kitchen cupboard turned out. I know it's going to get a lot of use in my home. Thank you for watching. For more, please like and subscribe.